Good afternoon. We will get started in just a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, I would love to see where you're joining us from. So click on that orange box with the white arrow that opens your control panel. Uh, and in that question box, share with us where you're joining from today. So I'm coming to you from Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, in the middle of the United States. Uh, where are you joining from? Oh, here they come. All right, so we have um, Pennsylvania, uh, Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Bill from Pennsylvania, welcome back. Uh, it's good to see all of y'all this afternoon. This is also a good preview since we'll be using that question box during the session to share ideas. You'll wanna make sure that you know where that question box is. Uh, Crystal's joining us from Reno, Nevada, welcome. So glad y'all joined us. We have about three more minutes before we get started, uh, but make sure you can open up that question box in your control panel. Share with us where you're joining us from. We're excited to have you with us again on this first Tuesday of the month. Um, Washington State, hi Diane, great to see ya. I know when we planned this one, I was thinking it might be a smaller one because uh, I feel like everyone's in that back to school swing or just starting to get in that back to school swing. So if you're just joining us, I see quite a few people just jumped on. Uh, open up that question box in your control panel. Share with us where you are joining us from. Dawn from Oklahoma, you are in the right spot. You found it, perfect. Looks like everyone's finding that control panel, finding the question box. Tyra's joining us from Louisiana. Welcome. So great to see y'all this afternoon. I know I have some of my team members on board. They're joining us from various places around the United States as well. Uh, Lisa from Las Vegas, welcome. We'll take about one more minute. So if you're just joining us, drop uh, where you're located at today inside that question box. Uh, Bill's joining us from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Welcome. Thanks for being here with us today. I hope you're all getting ready for the back to school season or you're probably in the midst of it. I've been on the road the last couple of weeks. Uh, I was in Texas yesterday. It was great working with teachers who are super excited about the upcoming school year. So one more chance before we get started. If you just joined us, find that control panel. It's usually the orange or red box with the white arrow. Click on that, find that question box, and then type in there where you're joining us from. Tom uh, from California, great, thanks for joining us. Alan's joining us from Danville, Illinois. Awesome to be here. I was in Illinois last week. We are so glad y'all are here. We're gonna take about 30 more seconds. Uh, if you've been here before, you know I like to start right on time. Bob from Buffalo, hello. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we have uh, Arizona, thanks for joining us. New Jersey, awesome, so glad y'all are here today. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So like I said, we are so glad you're here today. Um, if you've been here before, you know that these webinars may be unlike other ones you've participated in. They are highly interactive and really depend on participant uh, participation to be successful. So get ready to jump in and share. All the sharing is done anonymously, so your name's not attached to it, and that helps increase engagement even in our classrooms, right? 
So with that, welcome to creating meaningful learning experiences. First up, think back to your K-12 schools. So we're going past college, past training. We're going back into the day of our K-12 school system. Think about one of your favorite lessons that you participated in as a student. One of your favorite memories or favorite lessons from those K-12 days. Now, think about why that was your favorite lesson. What was it? You're gonna share that lesson with us by either scanning the QR code, or there should be a link in that chat, pop it in momentarily. So you can open up your camera app on your smartphone, scan the QR code, it will take you to that URL, and just share with us a sentence or two about your favorite lesson memory. So as you're doing that, I will share one of my favorite lesson memories. It comes from my senior year of high school. I was taking biology two, and um, it was a lesson, we had just done the skin the cat lesson, dissected the cat, and we were having baby chickens, and we were injecting them with testosterone to see how it changed their features. Uh, my teacher, Mrs. Rogers, was the best science teacher in the whole school, um, and so she made it very personable and really put us in charge of taking care of the chickens, making sure that we did the injections at the right time, but it was a really cool learning experience that we could see the physical changes in our chickens over time. So that was one of my favorite lessons. So I'm now gonna jump into our Mintimeter because I want to read about your favorite lessons and I'm sure others want to see favorite lessons shared as well. So we're using the tool Mintimeter today. It is a free ed tech tool, but always check with your IT department to make sure it works on your network, it's open to your students, et cetera, before using it. All right, so my favorite memory came from biology two, my senior year of high school. We also have a high school physics class outside in the snow, active and fun learning. A dissection of the frog, it was hands-on. I remember that too from my high school days. I loved that one. Uh, accounting class with the complete practice sets, challenging and rewarding, yes. Um, compared and contrast, um, job and jb in ap english they did a lot of debating so french class they had to make a french recipe like crepes or escargot etc so are you starting to see some trends as more favorite lesson memories populate so i'm picking up on some trends of it's like real life real world kind of stuff it's hands-on uh the teacher's presentations use movie Trivia to ingrain the information, yes. There's one about uh, William Shakespeare's birthday party. They wrote from the plays on the paper plates that held the food, made food that would have been possible in the 1500s, made it come to life, right? So bringing that learning to life. Uh, how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in fifth grade reading and writing. It was hilarious and taught us a lot, absolutely. I had done some activities like that as well. And it's so funny when, you have students write the how-to and then they give it to someone else to complete the how-to and they like maybe forgot to say like get a knife to dip into the peanut butter or etc um attended an intro to diesel engines class remembering learning that the diesel engine also had no spark plug and it blew my mind yes uh volcanoes that erupted in dinosaurs in first grade uh the u.s history the teacher would have them dress would dress up uh, in lesson related costumes so I hope you're noticing some themes as we're sharing our favorite lesson memories here. Um, and with that, I'm gonna jump back into my slide deck. All right, so you know I always like to get us engaged before I kind of do some of the norms and the introductions, right? So we just shared our favorite memories. Um, my name is Mandy Green and I am a content specialist with Goodhart Wilcox. Uh, so I've been a classroom teacher, uh, worked at the district level, been a high school counselor, lots of different things. Uh, I also worked at a higher ed institute where they did some research on, you know, effective pedagogical practices. So you all know I love some good research, which we're about to dive into. Uh, today, we're just going to explore some authentic practices for teaching and think about how they can increase engagement. So I'm hoping you're starting to get some of that, those themes from the, our favorite lessons that we shared. Um, and now we're gonna dive into some good research. Y'all know I love some good research. 
So uh, if you will scan that QR code once again, or you can type in that tiny URL, um, you're going to access some research that was done by the K-20 Center at the University of Oklahoma. I am a little biased. I did work there with some fabulous educators and great uh, educational researchers. Um, the research on authentic teaching came out with basically some four main pillars. So they are construction of knowledge, disciplined inquiry, which is divided into substantive conversations and meaningful questions. And then we have those real world connections and that student centered learning. So I'll give you a couple more sections. I'm just going to dive into each of those. So you can scan that article. Uh, you can, if you're on Chrome, you can click that star button and favorite it so that it'll save to your bookmark bar uh, and you'll have it. We'll also make sure that this is at the end of the session so that you can have the research if you're interested. But let's um, go through each of those components just briefly. All right, construction of knowledge. So that's the process where students are trying to make sense of this new information or new content. So they're kind of negotiating it because first, students have to activate or queue up that prior knowledge, things that they already know. And then they start to compare what they already know with that new information that they're learning. Students can then manipulate the information and ideas. They can synthesize, analyze, generalize, hypothesize, and then they come up with a new construction or a new meaning or understanding. Next, we have that disciplined inquiry. And like I said, this is really divided up between conversations and questioning. You know, so that conversation is how students converse or talk about the content. Uh, it can revolve around the subject matter, those higher order, higher level thinking questions, helping students make distinctions, apply the information, and then also kind of form their own generalizations and learn how to ask questions about that new information. That leads us to those meaningful questions, you know, and usually they're organized around some sort of essential question that really helps students go deeper into the understanding of that content. Real world connections, which I feel like we throw this phrase around a lot in education, you know, and it's not just making tasks meaningful and lessons meaningful, but it's really trying to mimic the work done by professionals in that setting but then also taking that information and how can we use that information and influence a larger audience, right? So how can we take some information and let students share their learning via a blog or a podcast or a poster to really share with us more authentic audiences than just the classroom and the learners themselves and their peers. Then we have student-centered learning. That one's tossed around a lot too in education, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's really letting those students have more ownership of the learning environment, which I know is so scary. You're like, ah, but I have my systems and my routines and my procedures, and this is how I want my classroom run. But in thinking about how students can take, have more voice and choice in the learning experience and how they can have more voice and choice in their learning environment. But we can also take that to the assessment level and allowing students to create more performance tasks or choice boards that allow them to have the choice of how they want to show or demonstrate their mastery or knowledge of the new complex content that they've learned. Okay, so we talked about our favorite um, lesson memory from growing up in the K-12 system. I gave you a little bit of nerdy research, which I love some good research, and I always try to tie each of these webinars into some current research um, from the education system that's been peer reviewed, peer research, right? So it's good research. Now we're gonna start putting it all together. And this is where you're gonna have to open up that question box again, like you did at the very beginning. So thinking about your favorite memory of the lesson, and thinking about those pillars or components of authenticity that we just described that were on that QR code, which components of authenticity did you see in your favorite lesson that you just shared? So thinking about mine, um, there was a lot of construction of knowledge because we were having to take what we knew about hormones and the chicken and things that were happening. Uh, there was also um, a lot of that student-centered learning 
Uh, she really let us take ownership of the learning environment in that classroom. We also got to take charge of how we showed what we were mastering. So I'm gonna open up that question box now because I really would love to see how you found components of authenticity in that favorite lesson, and how you experienced it as a learner. So we have one, the instructor gave us construction materials and asked us to build a concept, right? So students were building student-centered learning, having some of that voice and choice into how they were showing what they understood. Awesome, thank you for sharing, Crystal. Right on board, right on trend. Let's see what else is popping up in that question box. It always takes a few seconds to populate uh, from when you hit enter and when it shows up on my side. But we're making those connections between our favorite learning memory or lesson memory and those pillars of authenticity that research that we just briefly went through. We're seeing one that's inquiry-based learning approach, uh, more of a flipped classroom design. So having students have conversations, ask meaningful questions, to deepen their knowledge and understanding. Yes, absolutely. We're seeing some that deal with real world connections, construction of knowledge, uh, the discipline inquiry with the debating with others in the class by creating and answering questions, um, comparing and contrasting content exactly. I love that compare and contrast. And I will say sometimes it's hard for students to create uh, non-examples. If you ask them to give examples of something and then give non-examples, those non-examples can be difficult sometimes. Yeah. Then let's see. Other ones. The students were the knowledge makers rather than being passive learners. Exactly. Uh, real world or movie world connections to bring the literature to life. Yes, it was it involved student-centered learning. It involved making some of those real world connections, maybe mimicking something that you would find as a professional in the real world there that was also in the movie. So you could see it, experience it in multiple ways. You know, that's also, we talk a lot about learning styles in education. And you know, the latest research says that we don't just learn one way, but we may have a preferred manner of learning. Um, so definitely trying to meet students and have uh, different preferred learning styles able to to uh, meet those access points in the lesson. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. All right, we're gonna keep going. Now, what can this research look like in your classroom? So we took our favorite lesson memory, then we took some research and we kind of identified where that research was seen in our lesson. Now we're gonna take it to our actual classroom. So if you scan that QR code using your camera app, it will take you to a tool called the Authentic Lesson Reflection Tool. I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment as well. These are questions that you can ask yourself to see how your lesson is aligning with those components of authenticity. You know, some lessons may naturally be stronger in one area than another, but by using this tool that allows you to just opportunities for more growth in other areas. So think about how you could use this tool in your classroom. You know, I often use this tool creating professional development sessions, especially those longer three to six hour sessions. Um, so that students, I know the learners are getting more authentic experiences, but I also would like to model what authentic teaching looks like in the professional development sessions. So let's jump into our reflection tool and just see what a few of these look like. And hopefully this will work. My computer already sounds like it's gonna like take off, like it's gonna launch. Um, so hopefully, there we go. All right, so as you can see for construction of knowledge, and then it gives you a couple of reflection questions just to ask yourself, how does your lesson, how does your lesson link prior knowledge with the new knowledge, right? Just good teaching practices. Uh, for discipline inquiry, like ask students con to construct a supported explanation or an argument for what they're learning. Also for substantive conversation, like how do you ask your students to share ideas and respond to those ideas? You know, you can use tools like Mentimeter that do not have students' names attached to them because we know that anonymity increases student engagement and participation to share ideas because that's exactly what we did at the very, very beginning. Then, real-world connections. 
So how is your lesson mimicking what professionals in your field might be doing? Then how can they also reach a larger authentic audience beyond that classroom setting? And then finally for student-centered learning, like what was mentioned that we just had mentioned in the question box, you know, students, are they taking an active role or a passive role as a learner? Are there choices there? about their learning, the content, the process, the product that they're creating to show mastery. So you can just take this tool. Once again, you can save it as a favorite by clicking that star. Uh, and it'll save it to your bookmark bar. And you can actually just see how your lessons align to some of these um, authenticity components. Because all we're doing is trying to create more meaningful learning experiences for our students. So back to our slide deck. All right, so we're gonna start the wrap up process. And y'all know I like a good reflection, I like a good summary, and then we're gonna have some questions at the end. So let's start uh, with some reflections. So thinking about today's session, it was quick 17 minute session, about to turn seven, 18 minute session right now. What stuck with you? If someone asked you about this webinar tomorrow, what would you remember? What would you tell them about making meaningful learning experiences? So scan that QR code again. It's going to take you to Mentimeter. And share with us what stuck with you today from, all, from our um, favorite lesson memories to the research on authentic teaching practices to reflecting on our own lessons that we create and how we can create more meaningful learning experiences for our students. I'm gonna jump into that Mentimeter in just a second. I'll give you about 30 more seconds to scan that QR code. And once again, thank you for participating. These sessions um, are awesome because of your participation. So we really appreciate you taking time to join us and to participate with all of the activities so that uh, we can all learn from each other since we all have such great uh, knowledge, expertise, and experiences to share. So with that, I'm gonna click on our Mentimeter link here and let's see what stuck with you today. So jumping into Mentimeter, as my students would say on the screen, wait for it, wait for it. Here we go. All right, so here's some things that stuck with some participants from today. There's gonna be some more that I'll probably be jumping in and added. Uh, students should have a variety of activities to demonstrate mastery. Uh, multiple ways to engage students in lessons. Exactly. So students have multiple access points throughout the lesson to engage that are on their level. Um, we know what a fine art it is of teaching to create these lessons that have multiple access points that are scaffolded, that can be differentiated for our learners. It's quite an art form. Uh, so thanks for being awesome educators and instructors. Um, something that stuck with me, the um, favorite lesson with me, I need to consider what my students will truly remember in the future. Exactly, yeah. Um, best remember the other examples of best learning experiences. Learning is easier when the activities are engaging, meaningful, and constructive. Yes, I used to joke as a teacher, I had to first entertain myself uh, before I could entertain my students um, to keep myself engaged in the lesson. Ideas about how to help students understand what professionals uh, actually do. Yes, especially with our career and technical education courses, always really trying to bring it back to that workforce. What are professionals actually doing? What skills do they need? Absolutely. Giving students time to think and create problem solving questions, both correct and incorrect. Yes, sometimes those incorrect um, ones create the most meaningful learning experiences. Absolutely. Um, engage from different platforms. Yes, y'all are like rock stars. These responses are awesome. Uh, if you can engage students and encourage them to participate, they will experience more authentic learning. Absolutely. Uh, reflection is powerful. I feel students see more opportunities to reflect. I do too. And I, I feel like I felt that way my whole teaching career. Um, and sometimes I struggled with where to fit it in because I always felt rushed to make sure all the content got pushed in, all the state testing, all the mandatory testing got pushed in. And sometimes I felt rushed. And so I'm not always sure I provided the best reflection time for my students and my learners. Yeah. Uh, there are more ways to engage than I realized. Oh, good. Awesome. And if you want to talk about that, you're always welcome to email me 
I love talking about good teaching practices. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, a good idea for a project, purchasing class unit on vendors, yes, plan a party and all the vendors that would be necessary. Absolutely, because that's what you do in the real world. Um, trying to get students more involved every day. But yes, I agree. I don't care what grade level you teach or adults that you teach, uh, trying to get them engaged and involved is a difficult task. Um, and that's why I'm always apt to really sharing ideas and using platforms like Mentimeter that you see on the screen right now so that we can share ideas with others. And hopefully uh, you can learn from this webinar, but then really learn from your peers because sometimes the best uh, ideas come from your neighbors, right? So these are some things that stuck with some of our participants today. Thank you so much for taking time to scan that QR code and jump in there. We're gonna go back to the slide deck so we can start our little summary. So today, we started with your favorite lesson memory, just to see what stuck with you from learning in the K-12 environment. Then we took some research from the K-20 site, the Authenticity Research, and then we applied that. So what does that look like in your classroom? What does that look like for that lesson? What can it look like in the future? We use the Authentic Reflection Tool. That is a mouthful to say, by the way. Um, then to say, like, how can we better lessons to make sure our students are having these authentic experiences? So really creating more meaningful experiences for our student in the classroom. Then uh, we did palms, which is the point of most significance. It's a great exit ticket for your students. What stuck with them that day? Maybe that will help you inform you about what maybe you need to cover the next day or reinforce the next day. If something really important didn't stick with the majority of your students, you're like, aha, uh -huh, I didn't cover that very well. Maybe I need to do a little refresh tomorrow, right? So that palms is a great reflection. While students have time to process what they learned, what was important to them, what stuck with them, but it also clues you in as an instructor of some things that might need to be recovered. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for joining us. Uh, I would love to talk about questions, answer questions. So open that control panel once again, pop any of your questions into that question box and we can continue to learn from each other as we kind of wrap up just a little bit right here. Um, so I'm still seeing some that popped in later from some of our questions about engaging students. Uh, they'll experience more authentic learning, yeah. Um, Someone said, I'd like to rewatch, so we'll be receiving the recording. Yes, at the end of this, usually it takes about 24 hours, you'll receive an email that will have your attendance certificate um, and a link to watch the recording. Uh, what's also great about the new certificate attendance is there is not a place to put a time for how long you watch this. So we've started putting the time frame, like 30 minute professional development webinar in that title. So if you do need to submit it to your uh, principal or your campus or your team lead or department chair, um, it will have a time on there that it was a 30 minute webinar. Hopefully that will help some of y'all as we try to automate some of this through the go-to webinar features. Uh, what does POM stand for? POM stands for point of most significance. So you're just looking for the point of most significance from that lesson. What stood out to them that day? Absolutely, great question, Christy, thank you. What other questions do we have that I can answer for you? Like I said, thank you for being here. We enjoy you taking 20 to 30 minutes to hang out with us and really uh, think about some teaching strategies that we can all use to help learners from kindergarten and to adult learners. Um, so thanks for being with us. I'm gonna hang out maybe one more minute. So if you have a question, pop it in that question box. Uh, if not, I'm gonna put my email up. Feel free to email me. We are more than happy to help where we can, uh, answer questions, have fun, educational conversations um, but thanks for joining us have a terrific after afternoon and then we will see you in two weeks on august the 16th for study skills so have a great one and we'll see you soon